Today I will be analyzing the Book of Negroes by Lawrence Hill and the Bite of the Mango by Mariato Camara. Summary of the Book of Negroes Young Aminata was captured from her home in Bayo by slave traders and placed on a slave ship. On the ship, all the other victims were treated harshly, but she received favor because of her midwifery skills. While they arrived in South Carolina, Amanata was sold to Master Appleby, the owner of an indigo plantation. While on this plantation, Amanata secretly gets married and has a child who was later sold by Master Appleby. She also secretly learns to read. Appleby eventually sells her and she escapes from her new master in New York. Many years later, she is approached by the British military to help them draft 3,000 black loyalists who are granted passage from New York to Nova Scotia. Amanata gets reunited with her husband, Chakura. Many years after arrival in North Nova Scotia, she delivers a baby girl who was stolen from her by a Jewish family at the age of three. All her life, Amanata had been dreaming of going back to this place the white people would always call Africa. She eventually goes back to Sierra Leone, but the promised resources never materialize. At old age, Amanata moves to England, where she finds her daughter, and she writes her autobiography. The protagonist's profile for Book of Negroes. The protagonist's name is Aminata Giallo. She was born in Bayo, West Africa. She practices Islamity and her superficial features include crescent moons carved into each of her cheeks. She also has the initial G-O running above her right breast. This was a brand burned into her flesh by slave traders. The languages she speaks are English, Fofode, Arabic, and Bamanikin. Summary of Bite of the Mangoes This is a true story of Mariatu Kamara, who during the Civil War in Sierra Leone was an unfortunate victim of amputation. After this event, she walks around seeking for help, but she ends up in a hospital in Freetown, where her wounds are treated. She wakes up only to find that most of her family members were in the same dilemma as her. Months before the attack, she was raped by a family friend, and while at the hospital, she found out she was pregnant. She and most of the victims of the rebel attacks were moved into refugee camp. About eight months later, she delivers a baby boy who dies 10 months later due to malnutrition. This brought extreme grief for her, though she did not want the baby at first. She later gets an invitation to go to England in order to be fitted for prosthetics, but didn't turn out as what she expected. She receives her prosthetics and goes back to Sierra Leone and from there to Canada. Today, Marietta lives in Toronto, Canada, and is a UNICEF representative. The protagonist's profile for the Bat of the Mango. The protagonist is called Marietta Kamara. She was born in Sierra Leone. She practices Islamity, and her superficial features include amputated hands and a C-section scar from the birth of her son. Languages that she speaks include English and Creole. English was a language that she learned later on in her life. The themes that will be analyzed in this presentation are loss of identity and loss of freedom. Before we dive into these themes, let's take a look at some of the few things that shape in our identity. Gender or age, race, occupation, religion, marital or parental status, and moral or ethics. Loss of identity in the Book of Negroes. Our first is loss of identity of parental status. Amanata is deprived of the opportunity to play her role as a parent. At the tender age of 10 months, her first child, Mamadou, is sold by Master Appleby. She tries to find his whereabouts, however, her inquiries come to naught. Many years later, she has another child whom she names May. But at the age of three, the Witherspoons, a Jewish white couple whom she had befriended, abduct me. Bring my baby back, I shouted. He ain't in the fishnet, Georgia said. He's long gone. Master App B done said him good. The next is loss of identity in terms of race or ethnicity. Aminata reaches a point in her life where even black people don't consider her a black person just because she has been to a white man's country before and she has lived among the white men. Though she does counteract this by saying that she is a black person, no one believes her even though her appearance shows that she is a black person. Loss of identity in terms of religion. 
Aminata was a freeborn and devout Muslim at the beginning of the novel and she read the Quran from her father, she learned how to read it and prayed often. But after she was captured, she was discouraged from praying and her spirituality gradually faded. As a slave, she continued to fulfill a few practices from her religion, like refusing to eat pork. Many years later, she met a reverend who tried to preach salvation to her, but she refused and said that her heart does not belong to God. My arms have been very busy, and Jesus hasn't come looking. So I explained that mine wasn't a Christian soul, although I had seen a little of the Quran and the Torah, and I'd many times read parts of the Bible. Loss of Identity in the Bite of the Mango Loss of Identity in Terms of Parental Status Marietta loses her baby after 10 months due to malnutrition. She was stripped of the ability to exercise her parental rights and authorities. Due to the impact that the invasion of the rebels had on her village, she was forced to move into a refugee camp, where she was unable to nourish herself enough food because of lack of money. Due to her inability to gain enough nutrients, she was unable to feed her son the sustainable amount of nutrients he needed to grow and survive. When the nurse first told me that Abdul was suffering from malnutrition, I started eating as much as I could, hoping I could make my milk more nourishing. So evidently, she did try to prevent her son from dying, but he still died anyways. Next is loss of identity of age. As an adolescent, Marietta's knowledge of certain information was very limited. She was an innocent girl who loved to sing and dance with the other girls in her village. Marietta, being her child herself, was forced to play the role of a mother at a young age. Her childhood and innocence was taken away from her, and she could no longer act or play like a child would normally do, because she had to cater for the needs of her own son. Having to mature quickly than she should have, Marietta was robbed of her childhood. Though her baby dies a few months later, she still had to carry the ma emotional baggage of guilt and grief. You were just a baby, and babies aren't supposed to have babies. Now let's explore the theme of loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is the loss of the right to do as one pleases and to have one's free will taken away. So loss of freedom is when one is not able to do normal things that other people would be able to do. These things are taken away from them. Loss of freedom in the book of Negroes. Physical loss of freedom. Aminata was placed in a coffle, which is like a chain when she was captured. So this is an example of physical restriction. Slaves were not allowed to know how to read. She does know how to read, but she did this in secret. Slaves were not allowed to get married unless they were married before they were captured. Slaves were not allowed to have children unless they also had ch a child before they were sold. And she was considered as an object to her master because he didn't respect her body and he would have sex with her whenever he wanted, even though she never consented to it. She was stripped of the ability to do things that we would normally be allowed to do. She wasn't allowed an education. She wasn't allowed to have a marriage and she could not have children. Loss of racial freedom. As humans, it is our right to live wherever we want, but this is not the case for Aminata when she moves to New York. So she escapes from her master and now she's in New York all alone. Blacks were only allowed to live in a certain area of New York called Canvas Town, and any Negro that did not live in Canvas Town was either re rich or privileged in some ways. And there weren't many Negroes that had this opportunity. Loss of Freedom in The Bite of the Mango, our second book. Loss of Physical Freedom Marietta's hands were amputated by the rebels, and she had to adjust to a new way of living. She was frustrated because she would be fitted with prosthetics, but she didn't want those because she wanted to do things herself. So she felt trapped in her own body. She did not like feeling helpless, and she missed the ability to be able to complete simple tasks without any assistance. I had become quite proficient with a device, using a spoon or fork, attached to my forearms with Velcro. I don't need these fingers. So she obviously didn't want any assistance. She wanted to be independent.
Loss of emotional freedom. During Mariatu's stay in England, anytime she walked